This question is going to deal with nomenclature or how to properly name and write the formulas for substances. The first example we have is a chromium 3 hydroxide. This 3, whenever it's given for a transition metal, represents the charge on the transition metal since they can have different charges. So since the Roman numeral is 3, we know that the chromium in this example will have a plus 3 charge. We also need to know the hydroxide ion, and that is OH minus. And so overall, we need to make sure that the charge is balanced in our formula. So if we have a chromium with a plus 3 charge and hydroxides have a minus 1 charge, it's going to take 3 hydroxides to give a minus 3 charge that balances out the plus 3 for the chromium. And here then is the proper formula for chromium 3 hydroxide. For magnesium cyanide, we should know that magnesium is a plus 2 metal, and we can find that right in group 2 on the periodic table. The cyanide ion, another polyatomic ion, has this formula. Cyanide is a minus 1 charge. Again, need to make sure that our charge is balanced, so we need 2 cyanides to give an overall minus 2 charge to balance out the plus 2 for magnesium. Here then is the formula for magnesium cyanide. The next example uses another um, poly uh, polyatomic ion and another transition metal. Notice the 4 for the Roman numeral represents a plus 4 charge for lead here. So lead will be plus 4. The carbonate ion is a CO3 2 minus. All right, so we need to have as many carbonates as are required to balance out that plus 4 charge from the lead. So two carbonates would give us a minus 4 charge. Therefore, this would be the formula for lead 4 carbonate. And the final example actually uses two polyatomic ions. The ammonium cation looks like this, and the acetate ion looks like this. So once we know that, we can see that the charges are going to balance out beautifully here. Ammonium acetate will simply be 1 to 1 ratio, and the formula would then look like this.